Hey everyone, in this video I'll be talking about day 13 of Advent of Code 2022. On the leaderboard I placed 120 something and 140 something. Let's take a look at my personal stats. Yeah, I got ranked 121 on part 1 and 148 on part 2. Not quite on the leaderboard, but I'm getting close. The trend is upwards and I'm hopeful that I will get some points again. So I did do it pretty fast, I think, and I am proud of that. So in this video, I'll just be explaining the puzzles, but first you're gonna get to see a time lapse. Um, also, reminder, you can check out my code in the description. It's in a GitHub repository, which contains my solutions to all of the days. So be sure to check that out if you want some more detailed code. And now let's jump to the time lapse. Okay, I found today's puzzles kind of funny because they harken back to a puzzle last year from 2021, um, day 18, <clears throat> which was about snailfish arithmetic. Both today's puzzles and um, day 18's puzzles from 2021 uh, involved nested lists and numbers. So I'll link to my video from last year explaining day 18 in the corner up there if you want to check it out. I just found it was a funny coincidence and uh, definitely brought back some memories. Anyways, let's talk about today's puzzles. So what we have is we've received a distress signal and we're trying to parse it. It consists of a number of packets and each packet is um, a list of numbers or lists. The puzzle that we're trying to solve is we're trying to order these. So there's a number of rules for how we're supposed to order these packets and our eventual goal is to sort all of them. So um, when comparing two values and each value represents a packet, um, it's either a list of lists or numbers. So let's say we have two um, values. Uh, the first value is called left and the second value is called right. If both values are, inter are integers, then we simply compare the integers and the lower integer uh, should come first. So for example, if we're comparing three and five, those are in the correct order, but five and three are not in the right order. So small integer should always come first if both values are integers. If both values are lists, then we iterate through all the items in the list. Uh, we go through elements one and elements one, element one of the first list and element two, uh, one of the second list and compare them. If the first value is smaller, then we're good to go. If they're equal, then we go to the next item. Um, if we reach the end, uh, the, we should hit the end of the first list before we hit the end of the second list. And if it's equal all the way through, if the lengths are equal and all the values are equal, then we continue on um, to the next item and we return like undetermined. So basically, it's sort of intuitive. We want, when we're comparing two lists, we either want the first list to have a smaller value in the same position um, as the second list, or we want the first list to end first. Okay, uh, if there's a type mismatch, so if one value is an integer and the other is a list, then we convert that integer to a list by wrapping it um, with braces. So we just, as the puzzle describes, convert the integer to a list, which contains that integer as its only value. And now we have two lists um, because the other value is a list. And then we compare that based on rule number two. So in this way, we can recursively compute whether any two given values are in order. So the puzzle now lists some inputs, and I think these were really helpful for determining what a comparison actually looks like. You can see there's a deep nested recursive structure. So what we're asked to do is go through all of these pairs of values, which are separated by double new lines, and determine uh, which of those are which of them are actually in order. Take the in order ones and add together their indices, where we're starting from index one. Okay, so taking a look at my code is is a little bit complicated. But the complication comes mostly from the compare function, so we're going to focus on that. So first of all, we have to read the input, and this is pretty basic in Python. All we have to do is take that giant string, which is the input, and then we split it up by double new lines to get a list of strings. Each of those strings has two lines um, and represents the two values that we're supposed to compare. Our goal is to write this function, which can take in two values and compare them. It will return one. If A is less than B, which is what it should be, um, it will return 0 if A equals B, and it will return negative 1 if A is less than B, which turns any iterable into a list of items that are uh, of the form index, comma, item. So this just helps us um, unpack the indices and the elements a lot easier. Um, this enumerate function is apl applicable in a variety of applications, which turns any iterable into a list of uh, tuples, where the first element is the index and the second element is the element inside the original iterable uh, of that index. So enumerate is applicable in a variety of situations, and I use it in this case to extract both the index and the block inside each of the parts, because remember now parts is a list of strings which uh, each have two lines. 
So for every block, we have two values. We split it up by that new line to get a list of two lists, and then we map eval onto those two items. I figure it might be helpful to have the actual input here. So block in this case is just going to be a string containing these two lines. We're going to split it up by new lines um, to get two elements inside a list, and then we're going to map eval to them. So now the Python eval function is going to turn any expression into an actual Python object. So we can, for example, apply eval to any arithmetic operation. We can say eval the string 2 plus 3, and it'll actually evaluate to 5. And similarly, in this case, it can parse any arbitrary Python expression. In this case, the list is an actual valid Python object. So, okay, side note, I never noticed this, but Python lists have this funny coloring um, where it goes like yellow on the outside and then like magenta and then blue. That's really funny. Um, and then it cycles. I never noticed that before. Anyways, all of these lines are valid Python expressions. So we can use eval to turn them into actual Python objects that we can manipulate. And this just cuts out all of the processing that we might have to do of these strings. Just makes it really convenient. So now we have A and B, which are the uh, actual objects which these two lines represent. And we compare them. Um, if they're in the right order, so they're 1, then we can add that index, which is actually i plus 1, because in the puzzle indices are 1 index. Add that to the answer, and then at the end we print it out. So that's the basic overview of the code structure. The actual hard part is determining whether one object or value is less than the other. So let's take a look at how to do that. As a reminder, this function takes in two lists or values or packets, which are A and B. It will return 1 if A is less than B, 0 if A equals B, and negative 1 if A is greater than B. Um, and we'll use this recursively as you'll see later on. So first of all, we have to parse some things. Um, if A is a list and B is an integer, or if A is an integer and B is a list, then we have that type mismatch then that we talked about earlier, and we have to convert that integer into a list. So that's pretty basic. If B is the integer, then we wrap it in uh, square brackets. If A is the integer, then we wrap it in square brackets. And that's pretty simple. Once we have that, we now either have two lists or two integers. Um, the integer case is pretty easy to handle if they're both integers. By the way, I should remark that this is instance function takes in in, um, two things. It takes in an object and a type, and it determines if that object is of the given type. So, for example, is instance a comma int will return true if a is an integer and false otherwise. I've heard that you can also do it like type a equals equals int, and uh, I think this is bad practice or something. Is instance is better. Anyways, if both a and b are integers, then we simply compare them. If a is less than b, return 1. Um, if they're equal, return 0. Otherwise, return negative 1. Here, we're using an early uh, sort of exit condition. If uh, none of these ifs are triggered, then we can just return negative 1. There's no need for an else. Okay, so that's two integers. That's pretty easy to handle. Um, lists are the tricky part. So I'm going to actually grab the sample input for now because it's going to be easier to talk through. And we actually have the example explanations listed here. Um, so here's what we do. We first of all, we have to initialize indices. And I actually did this in a really um, kind of not optimal way. Let me refactor it. Um, just give me a second. Okay, now we actually have some readable code. So we initialize this index to zero, and we're going to iterate the index from zero until we hit the end of one of these lists. And that's going to be either length of A or length of B, whichever comes sooner. And just at the end of the loop, we're going to incre be incrementing this index. So again, we are incrementing index from zero up to the end of one of these lists, whichever one is shorter. So as we're looping through, we're going to look at both elements um, inside this list. Uh, I mean, these lists uh, at the same index. If the element inside A is less than the element inside B, then we are good to go because the puzzle says that we should compare the first value of each list. So if the first list is less than the second list at this index, good to go, um, then we can return 1. If they're in the wrong order, so if uh, the element at A is greater than the element at B, then we should return negative 1. Um, this is not what we want. Otherwise, uh, these two values are equal, and x should be 0, um, and we can just increment the index by 1 and keep going. At the end, either i has hit the end of a, or it has hit the end of b, or maybe both. So if it's hit the end of a, then we first check if it's also hit the end of b. If it has hit the end of b, then these two lists have the same length, and the puzzle says that if these two lists are the same length and no comparison makes the decision, continue checking the next part. So we just return 0 to say this test is inconclusive, a and b are the exact same. Otherwise, it hit the end of A before it hit the end of B, and all other compared values are the same, so we can return 1 here because A is shorter, and that's what we want. Um, otherwise, it hit the end of B, and we should just return negative 1. Honestly, we don't even need this if statement here, because if it didn't hit the end of A, then it must have hit the end of B. Okay, now we have that comparison function, and that's all done. So now we can compare 
any two values or packets to see if they're in the right order. And again, as I explained previously, we're just going to go through all the pairs uh, of packets, see if they're in the right order, if they're in the right order, and comment the answer by that index, and then just print out the answer. So that's part one. The complicated bit was really uh, doing this logic comparison to see if one list is less than the other. Overall, it wasn't too tricky. All we had to do was just follow the rules and keep track of types and make sure our indices um, were always within range. So as a reminder, if you want to see my code, that's going to be linked down below if you want to check out the details. Okay, now let's take a look at part two. So we can now compare two packets and all we have to do is put all of the packets in order. So we're going to disregard all the blank lines. All the packets are now part of the same group and we have to sort them using our comparison function. We're also asked to add these two divider packets into the mix, and this will help us uh, extract our answer at the end. So we have our giant list. How are we going to sort them? Well, there's this really handy Python thing that I searched up on Stack Overflow called comp to key. Now, why do we need this? Python has this really useful function called sorted, which takes in any iterable uh, and just sorts it. So this is helpful, except what we have is we don't have directly comparable objects. We know how to compare two objects, but we don't know how to assign that to anything inside the sorted function to make it work. Now, this is where the comp to key comes in. Usually in a sorted function, um, you have this uh, parameter called key, which can take in any element that doesn't really have a comparison value, and it should spit out some integer associated with it. So for example, if you wanted to sort a list of colors and you had values for each color, the key might be a function taking color to value. So in our case, we're going to need to convert our comparison function to an integer key. And that's going to help us work with the sorted function. Now, if you just want to put this inside a black box, we can just say Python 3 point something updated it. So now we can't sort items, uh, sort a list of items using a comparator function, which takes in two arguments. It can only take in a key function. And we're just going to override that by using the comp to key uh, method provided in func tools, which is just going to eliminate that problem for us. So now we can sort um, all of these elements just using our comparator function. It looks like a bit of magic, but that's what's amazing about Python. Anyways, uh, we need to produce re verse. Uh, somehow this thing got mixed up and this comparator function, usually comparator functions uh, return a negative, positive, or zero value for like greater, equal, or less than. I don't know what the exact order is. I don't know if one is supposed to be less than or greater than. So um, we do have to do this reverse thing to make sure it is the right way around. That's how I got a one minute penalty for this. I assumed that it was in the right order, but it actually wasn't. So I had to test against sample input, which I didn't do. Um, this is just a good reminder to always test against sample input to see if your answer matches. But yeah, that's the sorted function. We have our comparator function that compares two values, and now we can just sort all of the elements. Um, before that, though, we do have to add our two, what are they called, uh, divider packets into the mix. So we just add this um, two, which is nested inside two brackets, as well as the six, which is nested inside two brackets, and just add that to our list of uh, values. Okay, after we sort all of them, we need to find where the two divider packets is are, uh, I first consider just doing it manually, like pasting it into a file and like searching through where the two and the six are, but that's a bit difficult because there's like hundreds of lines and I didn't want to have to look through hundreds of lines. That's why we have code. So we don't have to do manual things. Um, this line was just for debugging. We can take that out. So we go through all of the elements inside the sorted list, which I should print out. So it actually looks something like this, um, like element one is this, element two is that, and so on. And this matches the order, which is provided in the sample input. So we have a list um, of values which are sorted according to our comparator function. And we just go through all of them and look for the divider packets. So if the we just loop through, if the current element matches the two, doubly nested two, then we can assign um, that index to the variable A. Similarly for the six, assign that to the variable B. Once we've found those indices, we can multiply them together to get our answer. Um, so we can do this except for the big input. And this doesn't really make much of a time difference, surprisingly. There, I mean, there's only a couple hundred lines, so it can't take that much more time. But I was a little bit afraid that this comparator function would take too long. Okay, anyways, um, that is part two. It is simply an extension of part one. We have all the hard parts done. I just had to figure out how to use this comparator function to actually sort a list because Python doesn't accept comparator functions. So we just had to override that using um, a clever stack overflow hack. I'll probably link to it in the description. All right, so that's it for day 13 of Advent of Code 2022. I hope this video was helpful, it was informative and explanatory, but if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, feel free to leave it in the comments down below.
Today was a pretty nice day. I enjoyed working on the puzzles, especially because Python took away that parsing element, which is usually very difficult to deal with. Um, and that's it. I'll see you tomorrow for day 14. Thanks for watching. Thank you.